everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and today I'm going to talk to you about Adobe Creative Cloud and which applications are best for which project. Now I'm going to make this really easy for you and tell you first that you should buy the entire Creative Cloud suite. The only reason you wouldn't is if you are a photographer and that's all you do and that's all you will ever do, then there is a cheaper version that is only $9.99 a month and that only gives you Photoshop and I believe there's another Adobe Lightroom or something like that. And that's perfect if all you do is images, but if you do more than that, and I'm guessing you probably use InDesign if you are subscribed or interested in this channel, then you will probably use InDesign and Photoshop, at which point you might as well just buy the entire suite. Now, InDesign is best for anything that has to do with books, so magazine layouts, planner layouts, which we teach a lot of in my classes, and also anything with lead magnets, so if you have a checklist, um, if you have a workbook or something of that type, an ebook, it is perfect for that because if you think about it, InDesign is very much like Microsoft Word, except that it's pretty, right? So InDesign, you could never do a magazine layout with Microsoft Word because you can't fit in images in different places and you can't do drop cap letters. You also can't change the typography in terms of kerning and letting and anything else uh, like that or make things all caps right away. So for those purposes, you definitely want to use InDesign or if you're designing children's books as well, it has the ability to be interactive so that children can click different links and it will take them to animation or have it video embedded or things like that. So that is what InDesign is perfect for. Now, if you are doing any sort of logo design, um, I think that Illustrator is perfect for that because it does vectors. And basically all vectors means is that when you scale something in Photoshop, if you've ever used that or even any photo you've had, if you've tried to make it, make it big, bigger, people will say, oh, it looks pixelated. And that's because each time you make an image bigger, it kind of stretches the data that's in there. And the data is not able to, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it's not able to reconstruct itself into being a bigger picture. Instead, it just looks stretched out versus Illustrator, which instead, when you stretch Illustrator out, it is able to recreate that picture. Nothing looks pixelated. You can scale that thing as large or as small as you want. And that's why people love it for logos because your logo is has to be usually stretched or manipulated for being added to different collateral, which if you are not sure what collateral means, collateral just means all of the materials that go along with your logo for your branding and your marketing to help sell your product. So that could be stationary, that could be a rubber stamp, that could be a flyer, brochure, menus, whatever it is. Um, anything like that is considered collateral. Now, the other application that I use is Photoshop, which I mentioned in the beginning. Now, Photoshop is excellent for images, and I do still use text in Photoshop, but I don't do text-heavy things. So if you, when you think about social media posts, I use Photoshop pretty much entirely for that. Now, I know some people who are more comfortable with Illustrator like using Illustrator instead, and that can work as well. Um, but I've just found, because I use a lot of images and uh, branded, styled photos that Photoshop Photoshop is just better for me and it has tools already built in there that maybe Illustrator does not. But I would say Illustrator and Photoshop are very close cousins in terms of functionality. Now, the fourth application that I use inside of the Creative Cloud is Adobe Premiere. I think everyone knows I'm a huge component uh, of video and I think it's a great way to market yourself. I think, you know, I think I saw some stat that said video is going to take over over 80% of social media by the time we hit 2018 or 2019 or whatever because people like video. I know when I had my corporate day job, the last thing I wanted to do was read your long, boring blog post. And when that's it, maybe it's a great blog post. It doesn't matter. I've been reading all day. I've been reading emails. They're so boring. I've been reading documents. I've been reading contracts. The last thing I wanted to do is go home and read some more. I just want to watch a video. Just tell it to me really quickly. I want to be entertained. So I think that's why uh, videos important, but I'm going off on a tangent. So Adobe Premiere is excellent for editing videos. Now, the two things that go with that is I do use media encoder so that I can encode it onto Facebook or for Instagram or something else. I pretty much just post to YouTube, so it's not really a big deal. 
um, but you can use Adobe After Effects to create cool animations. Now, that is, to me, a huge learning curve right now that I am not ready to do. And honestly, my videos could be way better if I knew how to use After Effects, but again, the time value of that and the fact that I'm not a YouTuber, if I was a full-time YouTuber, I would definitely for sure learn how to use After Effects, but I'm not. Um, you can still do a lot of cool things in Premiere, and there's probably, I only know how to use 10% of Premiere. It does so many awesome different things. So just that alone is something I would like to learn before I move on to After Effects. Now, there are other uh, tools in there. There's a, actually, there's a million tools in there. I think Adobe Audition is something I have used a little bit when I'm doing sound. I don't do pure recording, but I have been thinking about recording the voice for some of my books because the people on Audible are so expensive. So I think that that is something that you could definitely use Adobe Audition for and it's already included. Now, not all of the applications that Adobe makes are included in the Creative Cloud. There are, um, they have something, they have actually have email marketing. I know, I don't know why they're moving into the email marketing realm and they have a tool called Adobe Campaign. And I think I got a quote, it's like 10,000 a year. Um, and this is last year when I got the quote at the Adobe Max show. All right, so I, if you have any questions on Creative Cloud, let me know, but I hope you are in the process of downloading it right now and trying it out. I actually have a free lesson on Adobe InDesign. It is a five course lesson that will get you up and running. Um, it won't teach you how to create new things, but it will let you, it'll teach you enough that you can edit things, specifically the things in my shop where I create Adobe InDesign templates. All right, I hope everyone's having a great week and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.